Good afternoon. Today I want to break down this title of uh, Seeing Student Volunteering Differently into three parts. In the first two, I'd like to re-evaluate both UK and Kenyan students by focusing on my own experiences of volunteering with the Kenya Education Partnerships, or KEP for short. Finally, I'd like to zoom out and, see, and use KEP as an example to challenge some of the general criticisms of aid and development. So to begin with, when most people think of students, what comes to mind? What kind of images come to mind? Perhaps, usually they're accused of being lazy or sponging off the state by doing degrees like David Beckham studies or ufology, which is the study of UFOs. But as many of you are aware, students have come in for even more criticism recently for their enthusiasm at the National Union of Students' protests against higher education cuts earlier this month. Or perhaps, when we think of Oxford students in particular, images like this come to mind of the Billington Club. Today I'd like to paint a slightly different picture of students. Every year, young people from three universities apply to be one of 40 volunteers with Kenya Education Partnerships, a student-run, not-for-profit charity and registered NGO. They spend a full year fundraising for their project and receiving training on how they can make the most of their time in Kenya. They then travel to one of two locations. Previously, we've only been to the Kisi region, but this year we're sending out two teams, one to Kisi as before, but one to Kakamega as well. Now, both of these areas have been specifically selected because their education standards are low and their levels of poverty are particularly high. Since we've not actually been to Kakamega yet, today I'll mainly be talking about Kisi which refers to the town, pictured in this slide, and also the surrounding rural areas, which is predominantly where we work. But what do we actually do as an organisation? Students are paired up every summer. Each group is sent to one secondary school, where they'll live in the local community for 10 weeks. Schools will receive multiple years of investment, so even when project workers are no longer going, coordinators will be sent out every summer to reassess the school's progress and, if necessary, consider a further extra year of investment. We meet with the head teachers every year of all of the schools, past and present, to ensure that continued contact. And it also provides a forum for all of our head teachers to get an opportunity to share their ideas and experiences of running a school. This photograph on the right was taken from the school that I worked in in 2009, and most of the photos in the following slides are likewise from Aramba Secondary School. So how do we invest? What do we actually do in our schools? The essence of the problem um, is, consists, is something to do with free secondary education in Kenya and how it works. It's caused great changes in the schools that we've seen. Uh, it was introduced about two and a half years ago, and many have benefited from that revenue from the government but they have expanded so much that they no longer have sufficient funds to employ enough teachers and to purchase the necessary textbooks and science equipment to educate their students. So KP aims to fill that gap and provides the school with enough of these resources to then enable the school to employ enough teachers. But secondly, many of our schools are now developing electricity, but they don't have access to any form of computing uh, and specifically cheap computing equipment. So working with a local NGO, um, that imports refurbished Irish computers, uh, we've provided one of our schools with 10 this year at a cost of £40 each. And next year, we hope to roll this programme out to all of our project schools. But this investment is only one small part of what we actually do. These other areas are also key, key areas of focus for our organisation. And I'll just go into two briefly today, health and post-education opportunities. So this, gra this graph on the right looks extremely positive. It shows a declining HIV rate for Kenya, levelling off at 7% in 2006, and it subsequently declined even further. But in Kisi, the prevalence is as high as 70%. And this is, can be illustrated in that, that statistic on the board there of the orphans um, or the partial orphans at a Maiko secondary school, many, if not most of whom, will be themselves HIV positive. However, even with such a high prevalence, few of the schools teach the unexamined life skills lesson that would cover sexual health and keep them safe. So KEP aims to build sustainable relationships between our schools and local clinics who can send doctors and nurses every term to discuss HIV and AIDS, 
sexual health more generally, and malaria, which is another key killer in Kisi. When the period of investment is complete and project workers are no longer sent to a school, we hope these relationships will then continue so that subsequent generations of students will be taught how to stay safe. A less tangible problem in Kisi is a lack of awareness of post-education opportunities. Talking to Kenyan students, they'll usually say they want to be one of three things when they grow up. A doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer. Sadly, none but the very brightest will have the grades uh, necessary to uh, actually go to university to study these courses. But there are a whole host of other opportunities available at a local level, such as the Goosey Institute of Technology, which teaches courses like electrical engineering um, and mechanical engineering. So KEP, um, after a summer of research, compiled this document that we've subsequently uh, distributed to all of our schools um, that covers exactly these kinds of opportunities available to students. We also work with the guidance and counselling teachers to ensure that whatever their attainment level, students feel they have an exciting and realistic career path open to them. So hopefully I've demonstrated that our students are, uh, far, that volunteer with KEP are far from the lazy stereotype. Uh, but I will now move on to explore how my own experiences at Aramba forced me to see Kenyan students themselves differently. The first point to make is the sheer amount of work that Kenyan students um, put in at school. Their school day will begin at 7 and many don't leave until 6. Uh, and uh, they make use of this extra time in the evening to do their homework in the calm of the library. And when revising, some of our Form 4 friends were in school between 6am and 12pm in their holidays trying to educate themselves um, in preparation for their exams. And while we might question the effectiveness of such a long day, one can't fault the complete dedication to education that these students uh, demonstrate. And this commitment is even more outstanding um, when one grasps the, uh, the domestic chores that all students are expected to perform. And girls usually uh, bear the brunt of this expectation. Um, they're expected to cook, clean, wash clothes, fetch water and firewood. But boys as well, and some girls, are expected to often work on the local farm or shamba. Just to give you one example, this is Dennis, tending a very pregnant cow here. Um, and he was a Form 3 student. And in his holidays, he was expected to work in the farm every day, tend other livestock, including the cow, help his grandmother look after the house, and take care of his sister on top of the schoolwork he'd been assigned for his holiday. So the stoicism and determination which these students uh, demonstrate um, is really humbling. Quite a big theme um, in the media to, in connection with African countries. So this stereotype of, uh, of corruption may partly be true, but the anger and frustration expressed by the students at Aramba um, was extremely noticeable, suggesting that perhaps when the next generation of rulers come to power, things may be a little different. In an essay competition we ran where the uh, title was Corruption has existed throughout history and in all places. What measures would you take to combat it? Students came up with some really compelling ideas, most emphasising the need for total transparency and accountability to the community, sentiments that our own MPs would probably do well to follow. So finally, I want to place KEP within the broader arguments um, uh, of development. These are two pretty famous books uh, on the subject. Um, Dambisa Moy, on the left, born in Zambia, um, argued that age engen in engenders corruption and interferes uh, with the incentive system in many African countries. And this creates dependency on aid with absolutely no timetable for its removal. Wangari Mathai, on the right, uh, a Kenyan, is slightly less critical of NGOs, but still argues that they run the risk of filling a gap that really governments should be plugging, as well as reinforcing a sense of cultural inferiority that hinders domestic innovation. This is where I think KEP excels. I don't think we fall into any of these traps um, to do with aid or development. Firstly, we don't offer a heavily prescriptive model of development. Uh, we offer partnership with our schools, where both sides learn from one another. All the action we take is done in consultation um, with the head teacher at the very least, but usually with parents, teachers, and the board of governors as well. Sustainability is also the key to absolutely everything we do. If we decide to build a relationship with the local clinic, as I mentioned earlier, it will be the school that takes some responsibility for maintaining that relationship. Similarly, guidance and counselling teachers will be in charge of running their own advice for careers. What KP can give schools is 20 years of experience in the area. We visited roughly 160 schools. This means we can give ideas and advice based on this broad picture of education in the area. And it's finally noting something about our motto, 
investing in opportunities for young people. This includes uh, students in the UK. Volunteering with KEP gives a handful, a hand, uh, hands-on experience of meaningful development work that few other groups can rival. It gives a realistic impression of the challenges as well as the benefits of, de of development projects. And many of our past volunteers have used their experience with KEP as stepping stones to internationally renowned institutions such as the World Bank and World Vision. So, in conclusion, I hope I've broken a few of the uh, stereotypes I've mentioned and convinced you that the students who volunteer with KEP have a valuable impact, that Kenyan students need to be respe respected for their extraordinary hard work and that development initiatives may not be as counterproductive as some would have us believe. Thank you.